We've been exploring the story of the Exodus during this series. We've been moving slowly, slowly, slowly through it. And we've been noticing the motion and the emotions. We've been noticing the back and forth life rhythm. We've been noticing the story plays out in slow motion. We serve a God who moves slowly, slowly, slowly. The story begins, the story of the Exodus begins with Pharaoh's fear-filled finger-pointing proclamation. There are too many of them. We can't accept any more of them. What if, what if they take over? We must kill their children is what Pharaoh said. And he turns to the midwives, the birthing women, those who specialize in ushering in new life. And Pharaoh says to them, you are the ones who are going to do the killing. Do not let their babies live. Like all good women, the birthing women nod their heads, leave the room, and totally ignore his instructions. These are God-fearing women, life-bringing women, and they recognize that the empire is an agent of death. The women conspire. They work together. They form a network. They save the babies by sending them back and forth. So when Jacobed, Moshe's mother, gave birth, she had a whole community who helped her hide her baby. And when she could no longer hide him, she put him in a basket, pushed him out onto the water, where he was received by another group of women. Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, and the women who tended to her pulled the basket out of the water. Suddenly, Moses' baby sister appeared. With her arms outstretched, she offered to help. Shall I find a wet nurse for the baby? Yes, says the princess. So Miriam takes her baby brother back home to Jacobet, the mother. And now the families, or maybe I should say now the connectedness of the families are evident. 